In this video, I want to continue our discussion of how we can use model output from factor analysis in order to help us make predictions about what the covariance between certain variables are. And this example is going to be a little bit more complicated, not much than the one which we showed in the last video. So the idea here is that we have, for one particular country, measures of freedom of press, religious rights and rights of women at two different points in time. We have them measured in the year 1990, which is these sort of three variables on the left, and we have the same set of variables measured over here on the right hand side for the year 2000. And what we hypothesize is that these three variables are indicative of an unobserved underlying measure of human rights within that country. So we suppose that there is a measure of human rights in 1990, which is this measure here on the left, and that there is a measure of human rights in the year 2000, which is this other latent factor here on the right. And furthermore, we suppose that these two measures of human rights in that particular country are correlated across time, which is what we'd really expect. Furthermore, we also suggest that there are shared covariances in the error structure, which is not due to these common factors. So we suppose that there is a common covariance in the errors of press as it's measured in 1990 and in the year 2000. So that might be because of the fact that perhaps the same sort of survey was undertaken or perhaps the same sort of measures or methods of data collection were used rather. And we suppose that there is also a covariance of religion as it's measured in 1990 with religion as it's measured in 2000 as well as with women's rights as they're measured in the two different times. And the covariances, even though I haven't written them down, I'm going to use uh, 0.3 for the covariance of the error of press as it's measured in 1990 with the error of press in 2000. It's going to be 0.2 for religion and 0.3 for women's rights. So before we actually get started, let's just write down what our variance of our given indicator variables is going to be here. So y here is going to be six dimensional, hence we expect that the variance of y is going to be a six by six matrix. And the variance of y is going to be given by our sort of standard thing, lambda, our weight matrix, times phi, which is the covariance variance matrix for the factors, times lambda transposed, plus the matrix of the error variances and covariances. So it's probably worth just stressing what each of these terms actually means. This first term here on the left represents the variance of the indicators, which is due to the common factors. So because of that, we often refer to this as the common variance or communality. What about this term here, which is the theta term? Well, this represents the variance of our indicators, which is solely due to factors which are not those factors which we include in our model. So in the example up here where we've got press correlating with press in 2000, then we assume that that's due to perhaps the same sort of survey being used. In no way is that due to our latent factors, which in this case is human rights. So this measure of variance and covariance of the errors is what we refer to as the unique variance. So what would this variance covariance matrix for the errors actually look like here? Well, because we've got six errors, it's going to be a six by six matrix. So the diagonal components are just going to be the variances of the given errors, which I actually haven't specified up here, but it's not purely going to be a diagonal matrix. There are going to be some off diagonal components which correspond to the covariance of errors. So if we think about the first row, which is to do with the first indicator, so that in this case it's press, we can think about the fact that there's going to be a diagonal component, which I haven't specified, which is not going to be zero, but there's also going to be an element which is not zero, which is one of the non-diagonal elements, which is going to be the first row and the fourth column to signify the fact that we're talking about a covariance of press as it's measured in 1990 with the value which is measured in 2000 and we Oh, well, I've specified that that's 0.3. So we would have zeros up to 0.3 apart from the diagonal element, and then we'd have two zeros after that. 
And we can fill out the matrix for the other rows in exactly the same fashion. And I'm not going to do it because it's quite laborious. OK, so how can we use this type of diagram to help us derive the covariance between indicator variables? So let's talk through an example. So let's say we wanted to work out the covariance of y1 with y4. So we're trying to work out the covariance of press as it's measured, or freedom of press as it's measured in 1990, with freedom of press as it's measured in 2000. So we just use our same method here. Essentially what we do is we start off at press, then we walk down to the first latent factor, which is human rights as it's measured in 1990. Then we have to traverse over to human rights as it's sort of weighted in 2000. And then we walk finally up to freedom of press as it's measured in 2000. So the numbers we encounter here is we encounter a weight of 0 0.8. Then we traverse over, so we encounter a weight of 0 0.6. So we've got 0 0.8 times 0 0.6. And then finally, we encounter a weight of 0 0.8 again when we walk up to freedom of press. And I should stress here that this is an example where by the investigator has constrained the weights on each of these different sort of branches here such that they are as the same in the year 1990 as they are in 2000. So the freedom of press weights 0.8 on for both of these different years, and same for religion and for women's rights. And there are good reasons for doing that. One of the reasons is that you might suppose that one could come up with an idea of what is human rights as a function of these three variables. And you'd hope that the sort of function which you came up with might at least have some similar structure through time, or perhaps exactly the same structure. So that might be why you keep the weights the same. So that's the first part of the covariance of y1 and y4. But then what we need to do is we need to add on the variance of the errors, which in this circumstance is just 0.3. And if you do that, you find that this actually adds up to 0.684. So it's not that much harder when you have error covariances, you just need to remember to add them on at the end.